Well, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our podcast. Today, we have a returning guest who uh, got a lot of favorable feedback from the pre previous show, Miss Holly Celiano. Um, as you may recall, she's a patriot, a truther. She's been in this community for well over 13 years. She's also a mother and a grandmother and a pillar within her own community and has a longstanding set of cogent relationships that extend all the way up to certain military factions. She's been kind enough to join us today once again. Thank you, Holly, for being here and welcome once again to the podcast. Thank you, John, for having me back on and happy new year to you. And here we are in January. Indeed. And yes, happy new year as well. And it promises to be a roller coaster powder keg of events for sure. As we can see, it's already starting to flood out <clears throat> right away from the, out of the gate uh, from the first uh, the first day of the new year with Japan's earthquakes and such. Um, there's a couple of things that we're going to cover today that I know people have kind of been on our radar to talk about, and, and you've graciously offered to kind of uh, uh, signal the bow on that, so to speak. Um, but before we do that, let's let's kind of do a cursory overview of our last discussion in regards to the new year and the RV. Um, what can you share with our viewers as far as what you're seeing from a 30,000 foot view financially, what we can anticipate, not so much dates, but just sequence of events and how you see things playing out specifically with the first quarter? Sure. So I like to look at globally what's going on, because that gives you a real solid proof as to how this is progressing. Where too many people just focus on, you know, gurus saying certain dates and they're not focusing on the broader picture. So I, I've written down a bunch of things that kind of tie everything together where we're at with the global markets and this whole go global event happening. So let's just start with banking. So there's been a lot of um, notices out there that Chase and other tier one banks have been reporting that they're doing training on exchanging currency, and that's going to be completed soon. So there's been a lot of um, noise out there about that. And people have bank stories that have reported that they're hearing that firsthand. Banking will be done worldwide through personal accounts on the Starlink satellite and, and via QFS. So banks are being transitioned from service providers and they're not gonna have access to your accounts like they do now. So all of banking is transitioning. And a lot of people are saying, all these banks are all being restructured and revamped. And there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Like a lot of them, even my own bank has done a complete revamping of new furniture and setup and you know carpeting. So they're all preparing for something. Um, uh, there's been a total ban of the U.S. fiat dollar has been implemented in Iraq, and that came out on January 1st. And nobody is buying the former U.S. Treasury um, notes, but LIBOR has now been transferred to SOFAR, and they are gold back, and they are using the U.S. Treasury notes, which is also gold back. The treasury is generating digital treasuries and that's gold back and that's what we're using. So with Iraq going and saying that they're not using US dollar anymore, there would have been a complete collapse in that market had they not been switched over to the US digital gold back currency. Everything would have collapsed. So that's going on behind the scenes that people aren't really paying attention to. But that's why this is all still being held up because they're using US currency. If they weren't using those digital currencies, the whole thing would have come tumbling down. So here's some things nobody's talking about. Um, the US is gold back. We've been gold back since March of 2022. And that is not the fiat dollar that's gold back, that's the USN. Iraq and BRICS are probably accepting these digital gold back US dollars for oil and other commerce. And that's why this, in my opinion, things have not blown up. So in 2018, the collapsed US Inc. happened and we've been in this uh, contingency of war government with uh, running and that 
you know, most people aren't paying attention to that, but there really was a collapse of the USA Inc. ExxonMobil just handed over all of Iraq oil fields to China. So they're not doing that via the US. The US military is exiting Iraq and handing back the keys to Iraq. And that's been another thing to put them on a stable level government and playing field. So you have the three pillars that are comprised of Washington DC, the city of London and the Vatican. Those have all been gutted and cleaned out. And you could see that in the news, but, and I have my sources that have confirmed that those are all gutted and cleaned out. Here's something else I just read. The black swan event is, isn't most people have been thinking it's going to be the crash of the stock market. But they're saying, what I read was shipping and supply chain event where they keep saying, watch the water. Well, that's what that, that uh, black swan event is. It's the crash of the shipping and supply chain. So that's why we keep hearing stock up on supplies and have, have all of that three weeks because if this shipping stops, people aren't gonna get anything. The shelves are gonna be emptied really quick. So just as Iraq is de-dollarizing, the world, in my opinion, is also quietly doing a sweep of all the fiat dollars and their banking systems. And this is comprised of the older US Federal Reserve notes. They're just being kind of quietly swept clean. So Iraq said they would get rid of the black markets of selling currencies in December. They have done that. They said they would get rid of the US dollar January 1st. They have done that. They said they would join BRICS. They are. They would make an announcement on the timetable for the new rate mid-January. That's coming out come the middle of January. And then I just another thing as a side note. So I understand the holdup for this whole RB has been the world court signing off on everything. And in December, the cabal made a last ditch effort to try to hijack the QFS system. And that's why this didn't go off in December because everybody expect, expected this to happen. So they tried to get NATO to take it over. That did not happen. The White Hat Alliance wanted everything blocked legally to stop the cabal and they went to the world court and everything had to be ratified under common law and not maritime law. And that's why this has been delayed. So from what I understand, everything's been signed off by the, the world court. And you know nobody's going to know the date when this happens. Everybody thinks they'll you know, put out a date and that's gonna happen then. No, there's maybe five people in the world that know when this is gonna happen and it's going even, I don't care how high up you are, it, they will not know. It will be kept secret until this happens. So nobody can predict when this happens. The UN has pulled out of Europe. And the reason that they're stating that is because the electric bills have gone up 300%, which, you know, obviously there's something more going on there. There's been over 250 banks have failed because they're not Basel or compliant. And just this week alone, there are 64 US bank branches that have announced closure in a single week. And we're seeing more and more appeal back of the curtain with the Epstein disclosures coming out with the Miami mall, aliens being seen. So there's more and more disclosure coming out and being leaked. So everyone's trying to figure out a date when this will happen. You have several calendars. We have the uh, Gregorian calendar that was started by Pope Gregory in 1582. And they just wiped out 10 days with that calendar. You have the Julian calendar. That goes back to 46 BC. And that adds an extra day every 128 days. And then you have the solar calendar. So when all these dates are put out, people don't know exactly what calendar we're using. And then lastly, we have protocol 20. 
So it's part of the QFS, it's a network upgrade. So on December 18th, the test net was a successful upgrade. Then on December 19th, there were 20 versions of Stellar Core, Horizon, Sorbna, RPC, and Stellar released. And then there is another upgrade, well, not an upgrade, it's a vote on the 30th of January. It is to see if they're going to permanently upgrade it. So all of this ties in with the QFS, the protocol 20 and all the testing, and that's been beta testing behind the scenes for a very long time. So that's kind of an overview globally where we're at. So I'll come up for air. Well, thank you, Holly. No, that was a great detailed and comprehensive overview. We uh, certainly appreciate that as always. Um, Two questions for you, just to, to kind of um, to kind of absorb the the genesis of what you shared. Um, it's my understanding from the relationships that I have, and I've asked several people to get you know confirmation that um, because there's this contention within the community, you know, QFS is good, QFS is bad, and it seems to be a split consensus on that. But the the relationships I've talked to have come back and said that um, the new system is going to be run by Christians, which will benefit. The Christian community, instead of you know compromising us the way we've been you know to this point, um, at least you know optically speaking. So the first question of the two is is can you confirm that? And then number two is uh, we had an uh, interview yesterday with SG Anon. I'm sure you're aware. And uh, one of the things we talked about was Iran's importance in the BRICS because everybody's focusing on Saudi Arabia, and they certainly play a pivotal role, obviously. But I think sort of the Iran um, alliance is the dark horse because they're going, they've been such a problematic issue for Iraq being the bigger brother and the proxy government that we talked about last month. Um, but now um, they're going to have to, when Israel attacks them with the secret nu nuclear oil field attack, excuse me, nuclear site attacks, um, that's going to force Iran into a surrender from the mistake that Israel is going to make. So. My, I guess my question would be is, do you think that Iran running into solace to the BRICS to avoid all this stuff, is that more of a mistake than a benefit in your estimation based on what we were just discussing? Okay, lots of questions in that. Um, so with Iran, what I understand, what we're seeing is all theater. Everything's been done already and it's just being played out in real time, but it's all been decided. It's all been done behind the scenes and they're just playing it out. So I, you know, all these countries all have to get along and be part of the same team. So them joining is they're really a lot of these wars are looking like they're opposition and things are going on just to create massive distraction, but they're all part of, you know, they, they've have all this stuff worked out already behind the scenes. So everybody's eventually going to be on bricks because nobody wants to be left with the US fiat dollar anymore. And it's really being just taken away slowly from all the markets. As far as the QFS being run by Christians, I haven't heard that per se, but the the old way of banking, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, you know, all the corrupt banking, banksters, if you want to call them that, they're they're going to be gone. We're, it's going to be a transparent and free, um, healthy coexistence with banking and money. So you want to have your heart in the right place. You want to definitely be on the right side of this because there is a major global shift happening. And people, when this whole thing comes down, you're going to see who's good, who's bad. And if you're a bad energy, you won't be able to, to make it. It, you just won't be able to last. Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Thank you, thank you for uh, addressing that. So now that you've kind of given us a very um, articulate you know, overview of more or less where we stand to date, um, let's pivot to the second part of our discussion, which I know you were very passionate about discussing today, and that is something that I'm planning on doing for my followers 
uh, at, at the, what I believe will be the right time. I didn't feel that we were there quite yet, which is why we haven't done this show. But after talking to you, you seem to feel very strongly that um, we're closer than maybe people anticipate because, you know, there's the old adage, how close is close? Because that's why we don't, like you said, fixate on dates and rates here. We're, we're about facts and puzzle pieces and, and trying to use the best discernment to draw your own individual conclusions. So with that in mind, um, you felt it was important to precipitate the discussion that we eventually want to have. And a lot of our followers have asked us to discuss, which is, you know, planning post RV in terms of banking, in terms of new equipment, phones and computers and the like, and, you know, how to transition into being your own central bank. So I'll kind of just turn it over to you and let you articulate, you know, why you feel we're in a position to be talking about this now and what people in your estimation should do to, to make the, um, you know, the, the leap and the preparation post RV. So most people just focus on, give me a date, give me a rate. And they're not focusing on preparing for this. This is a spiritual movement. It is, there is an energy with this whole thing. And it's a complete reset of the planet, of the banking system. And as we're part of this, we're also being reset ourselves. They go hand in hand with each other. So I have been telling everybody, prepare for this mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, because if you have not, you will not be able to handle the this responsibility of this wealth unless you are prepared. And too many people are waiting for this to happen to prepare themselves. So before we go into to things with um, you know phones and whatnot, I just want to talk about like physically, are you taking care of yourself now? If you need to lose weight, lose the weight now. If you need to exercise, you know, start doing that. Focus on your health. And, you know, so many people are, I'll just wait for a med bed. Well, no, prepare yourself now. This is something we can do pre to prepare ourselves for this. Um, if you have unsupportive habits or poor choices, start breaking those because everybody thinks the med bed is going to be a, a one-stop fix them of everything. And that's not true. Emotionally, prepare yourself for this life-changing event. Can you handle what is coming to you? Will it overcome you? Because a lot of people have never had wealth like this. And if you're not prepared for this, to be able to handle it, it will consume you. There's lottery will it, winners that have said they wish they never won the lottery because it destroyed their life because they were not prepared for this. So that's why I really believe this has been a long time for us, quote unquote, humanitarians to prepare ourselves for this because if you have been working on yourself, you'll be able to handle wealth like this. Um, a lot of people have a fear of being successful or wealthy. And there's a lot of emotions that come with that. Start working through that stuff now. Don't wait till you get the, the money to work on that. Uh, mentally, have you mentally prepared for this wealth? Do, does excess wealth make you feel unworthy? Because a lot of people have that feeling of unworthiness. Do you feel you're not deserving? Prepare yourself in faith in the unseen. Prepare your faith yourself for this. Um, you have to be mentally tough for this transition because it's going to be life-changing when you're on the other side of that appointment. If you haven't done all these steps, it will destroy you. And that's why I really feel people have been given this much time to work on themselves and ded start dedicating this year to healthy new lifestyles and working on yourself. So Look, we'll put that aside. And then with the, the um, preparation of this post-RV, so you definitely want a new computer. 
you don't want to use the same computer. You want one computer that's dedicated just for the banking and only use it. Don't go on the internet and do searches on it. So have a separate computer just for the banking. Um, a lot of people have been told and think that you're going to get a computer at your appointment. I don't believe that's going to happen. That I think is just, you know, something that's been put out there. Same with the Q phones that we're going to get a Q phone at our appointment. I don't believe you're going to get them. I believe they will be available and you can purchase them. And, you know, definitely get a new phone and get a new phone number and, you know, Take yourself off of all of social media, just scrub yourself. And if you don't know how to do it, there are definitely companies that can scrub you off of the internet. You want to disappear because people that have been following this know who's involved and they will try to find you and, you know, offer you anything to try to get your money somehow and and steal it from you so you know really just be super careful with your security be aware of where you're going your whereabouts what you're doing change your habits don't have the same habits where they can you know track and say she goes to you know the coffee shop every day at 10 o'clock and then she goes to the grocery store by noon you know change it up so people don't know your habits I would even recommend, you know, move out of where you are living, go move somewhere else, get a new vehicle. Um, the, the wealthy people blend in. So you don't want to go flaunting your wealth. You want to just blend in to your environment where people can't tell that you're wealthy. Um, what else is there? Do you want to add something that you've heard? Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking about what you've been saying and processing it. <clears throat> I mean, you know, because like I said, I'm going to do a whole separate show for my followers on the protocols I'm going to use. But a, a lot of what you're saying checks off several boxes for me, especially with, you know, I've always told my <clears throat> followers three things. Change your mindset, right? Take action. And so where you prosper. And by that, I mean, not just the church. If you go to church, for example, um, if you're not prospering at that church, I mean, you pay your tithes, but the, the offerings is a special thing. That's where you get blessed is in the offerings, because that's where the generosity is. And I've tried to, you know, help my followers be mindful of the fact that um, wealth doesn't uh, define your character. It reveals it. It makes you more, it reveals more of what you already are from the heart, because right. a lot of the issues we deal with are heart issues. And as you know, it's been proven medically, um, societally, across the board, is a pretty strong consensus of people are now aware that um, a lot of physical ailments start from the heart. For, for example, if you're carrying bitterness and enmity towards someone, you harboring unforgiveness, that can manifest into physical issues, heart issues, Absolutely. blood pressure, cholesterol, what, what have you. So <clears throat> you know, changing the mindset is also... Um, a component of changing your thinking and what you speak out. So just, you know, every little thing that you do should be, you should, the people here that are really uh, dedicated to doing this the right way already know that they have been taking steps like a construction project. You do it in stages along the way. You don't wait till the very end to try to, you know, force up a building and wing it. You, you strategically plan everything from the, architectural to the foundation has to be solid and so you can build on it, right? Just like anything else, a relationship, what have you, it has to be built properly in steps and stages and be in the long haul. Um, so the mindset has to be correct. And it also has to be a, as we talked about, a long-term um, prospect. You know, you can't just think about, well, I'm going to be wealthy and then pass away. It's what about your, you know, the Bible says a good man leaves a, an inheritance for his children and children's children. So, you know, it's, it's thinking about your legacy. It's thinking about, um, you know, what are you leaving behind? What, what are you creating that can be built on for several generations? And then educating said generation so that this never happens again, because otherwise right. we'll fall back into the same place. And the whole point of this isn't to be a temporary band-aid fix-all. It's to, as you said, reset the entirety of your mind, your body, your soul, the financial markets, 
how you your oh. attitude Go ahead. All of humanity. It's resetting humanity because yeah. we are so far off of what our core values are. Mm -hmm. And we just become, I read something yesterday on Facebook that um, we are the only country that has a, a man that's been a beauty queen, a man that's the, the number one um, swimmer or, or, something and it's like everybody that they listed was a man that's being posed as a woman so our society has gotten so far askewed from true core values what really god and jesus and you know what was established for this country for this society and it's pretty sad that you know america is becoming a laughing stock in other countries because we we are just we've gotten so far away with being what we're really supposed to be about and going back you know this is a biblical event this is you know resetting us back to our true nature yeah absolutely um and just to add to the cache holly of what you were saying uh, just to kind of let some of my followers kind of have a sneak preview of some of the things I will be discussing when I have my own individual, um, like a weekly wrap up type of show that you know I do. Um, that's when I'll kind of bring this kind. Of, it'll be kind of, kind of like a special report or a special you know highlight. Uh, one thing I recommend when people get new equipment, phones, computers, iPads, what have you, is change your password and then change it again because they're going to be looking for us to get new equipment and they're counting on us using a password that's familiar that they can hack. So, you know, triple encryption, um, you know, but just changing those passwords several times, even again, after getting new equipment, I think is, is an important step uh, for people to take. Also, I think, like you said, you know, the mindset about money, how, how do we treat it? Some people uh, are very cavalier, you know, they, they spend in a certain area and not in others. So it's sort of unbalanced. Um, there tends to be a lot of fear about money for a lot of people that uh, if they can't give too much because they won't get it back. And, and my attitude about the wealth is, you know, you treat it like the ocean. When you go to the ocean, wherever you live or a lake, what have you, if you just sit and study the water, if you were talking about watch the water earlier, um, the tide isn't a one way effect. It's, it's a, you know, I've told people this wealth transfer isn't a tsunami. It's a series of waves, right? Mm -hmm. So surfers know this because they watch the waves and they watch for the patterns when that next big wave is going to come that they can catch. If they miss the last one, they stay with it to get the next one. Very, very similar to investing, right? You buy the dips. You, you hold on when things, when everybody else is selling, you hold on because you know that there'll be a position for you to get back in at an equal or greater marker. But back to the tide, when the tide goes out, it also comes back in. There's a flow. So what I like to do is keep my hands open like this. So when the tide comes into the wealth, I'm extending it out graciously to others with discernment, of course, not just, you know, people need to be careful about not just, you know, giving it away. Another tip that I have is with, with families, um, you need to establish clear, healthy boundaries with said families that you want to bless. This is a one-time thing. This is, I'm not an ATM. You're not going to come at me and because I'm as generous and say, oh, you know, so-and-so gave me whatever, $100,000. Now I'm in a jam because I spent that money on other things and over leveraged myself. Let me just go back to them for another set of money to undo my mistake. Healthy boundaries for people with regards to blessing family and friends is going to be, I think, paramount um, because it's not only setting boundaries with them, it's setting it with yourself and respecting yourself with the money that you're given because ultimately it's God's money. It's not yours, right? This, this right. is a gift. We're, we're supposed to be doing... God's work, kingdom work, our talents and our purposes of why we're here. We're not here to just pay bills and die. And that has been the prevailing mentality for so long because that's the brainwashing and inculcation of mind control that the cabal has established on us over many generations. This people understand. But when you understand that, you have to take action differently. If you want different results, you can't continue to go down the same path. So like you said, change up your habits and do it voluntarily. Um, I think being flexible and adaptable is the way I've been able to survive all of these different, um, you know, stops and starts and delays over the last 11 years for you, 13. And I think that adaptability is going to be 
equally important in the the, the changeover that we're, we're going to experience. I just want to go back to what you were talking about giving to to family members or friends money. And most of us have not had this kind of wealth that's coming to us. So there's this part, I don't want anybody to suffer. I don't want anybody to go through what I've gone through. So let me, because I now have millions, let me just give everybody this wealth. And if you keep doing that over a period of time, like we have been training ourselves to adapt and adjust to having this wealth. These people have not been doing that. They still have lack mentality. So if you just keep giving free handouts of money, they're going to come to you, like you said, like an ATM. And it's, you know, putting them on maybe a program. Listen, I'll, I'll give you this. I'll help you out. But, you know, take some wealth classes, Go educate yourself, do something to better yourself so you can prepare for this. And, you know, don't just constantly give handouts to people because that's what I see happening. So many people are going to do that because they, they feel bad for other people and they want to help everybody, but you'll lose your money as quickly as you got it. If you do that with everybody. So that's why you, you really need to be prepared for this on all levels of your being so you can keep your wealth. This is generational wealth that we want to develop and heal this entire world by doing the programs that we all want to do, you know, that are near and dear to our hearts. So yeah. there's, there's so much that encompasses with this. And I know like even in these rooms, I'm sure I know every single room is being read and monitored and they must just shake their head with some of the stuff that they see people say. Yeah. I know I do. Absolutely. And, and I, I concur with that because I've, I've seen those rooms before. So I know to what you're referring. Yeah. And, and just kind of in adding an additional sort of addendum to your point, Holly, that, you know, in addition to holding boundaries, you have to think bigger picture. Like if you know your family's patterns, I'm just, I'll give you my family as an example. Um, you know, some of my cousins in South Florida, you know, they're teachers, they've been established for a while. That's fine. <clears throat> you know, I don't ask them what they make, but you know, I know in that area per capita, you're probably looking at somewhere between depending on the type of teacher you are and, you know, a tenure and all those types of things. And you're probably somewhere in the 50 to $60,000 a year range is probably the median income. My point being is you have to think with a broader mindset change instead of just, well, I'm going to give them because they're my cousins or my aunt as an example. If your aunt is your godmother, right? I'm going to lavish her because she's been there for me all these years. I'm going to give her this. If your aunt has made, as an example, and this is probably for, you know, a fairly good example for a lot of people, <clears throat> if your aunt has made 50, 60,000 a year and you throw $10 million at her, you're going to overwhelm her. Similarly to if the old style cars with the fuel injection, if you push the gas too much, you're going to flood the engine. Your intention is just to get the car started and running. But in the process, you overfed it, you overcompensated, and you actually did more damage than you did good. And the other thing, believe it or not, is, is a almost a psychology mindset in the sense that um, there's a lot of people, it's not a, it's, there's no sin to it, but there's a lot of people that deal with codependency because they, they need, it's a form of control, or they feel that they need some of the friend or family to like them. And if they give them a certain amount of money, maybe it will engender them a little bit more. If they kind of drifted apart, you know, it can be a way to kind of pull people back in as a, a need for um, connection or control or whatever the case may be. It's not to psychoanalyze people, but it's just to say, be mindful of why are you doing it? You know, what is the purpose? Is it is it altruistic? Is it genuine? Or is there um, an agenda behind why you're giving money? And in those boundaries, think about the subset of the boundary of a one-time thing and structure it thoughtfully of something they can handle. So if your family, for example, is making 50, 60 a year and they're getting, I don't know, close to retirement, right? Think about their lifestyle, um, how much they would need to sustain that uh, from what they've made and what you're giving them. So I think a, 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 an appropriate example might be if somebody's making 50 or 60, instead of giving them, you know, six or $10 million they've never had, and they probably never would have, 
which again could potentially, if put in the wrong hands, could do more harm than good. You know, I'm thinking with my family, for example, of giving them somewhere between 250 and 500 because my my logic is that's you know five to ten year salary for them, right? And it's it's a lot, but it's they can they can get their head around that and say, oh, that's what I would take me five or ten years to make. That's a lot of money, but I can it's it, I can stair step that within reach as opposed to wow that's you know thirty years of forty years of income I would never expect to to get right. that and I don't even know what I would do with that and you're going to put them in a, a high a potentially high stress situation if they're not predisposed to thinking finances appropriately which a lot of people are not I mean it's it, it's yeah. a it's a a calling like anything else right like like being a doctor or being a pastor or being a lawyer it's there's there's a calling that goes for the people who are doing it for the right reasons. There's a calling that goes into that, just like there's a calling for what we're doing, and 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 you know communicating and giving this this leadership modality to the people um, is to give them a sense of genuinity and purpose and structure so that they can you know take that and grow with it and and maximize like you said the benefits. Um, another, uh, for me, as, as an example for you and for the audience, I, I look at the wealth transfer in multiple ways. And that's another thing that I'm going to cover in the show. It isn't just the currencies. It's not just the cryptos. It's not just the bonds. It's not just the precious metals. There's stocks. There's um, certain other types of bonds that you can leverage. There's land. There's natural resources on that land. A lot of the property out there, especially in the Midwest and South uh, west southeastern part of America is replete with natural resources. You'll find, you know, oil, natural gas, water sources. That's its own form of currency because you're going to be growing your own food. You're going to need a clean water source. You're going to need clean seeds. Seeds. If you remember the movie The Big Short with Brad Pitt, he said in there in the line, he said to the young man he was working with, "Seeds is a new currency." And we know that Hollywood does predictive programming, so they have to tell us the truth without making it obvious. But for those with good discernmental ability, they kind of pick up on those cues. And so, yeah, seeds is another part of the wealth transfer because you could have all the money in the world, but if you are stuck in a smart city or you don't have access to clean food or you know private planes to get, you don't wanna be flying commercially when this happens. I mean, you're subjugating your, it's not about elitism. I mean, private planes used to be, have a moniker, right? Of, well, that's for the elite, that's for the wealthy, that's for the, the, the arrogance and they want to flaunt their wealth. I'm finding now it's more of a safety uh, time and convenience and protection. You right. know, we haven't even talked about, you know, the implications of, you know, some of the medical decisions people have made in the last couple of years vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the jab and what that can do potentially. I mean, I just flew to family a couple weeks ago and i'm still recovering as you can see from a cold because i'm convinced those those planes are basically a big uh, uh the petri dish sure. of herbs. they are yeah <laughs> you know i got super sick last time i flew yeah and then you know that's common for people because you know you know people carry their germs especially around the holidays and you're in an enclosed space with recycled air and you know private planes the good ones have 100 percent fresh air they have zero gravity, which means that you might be flying at 40, 50,000 feet, but your body thinks it's 3,500. So the jet lag is a lot less of an issue. So it's, it's there's health implications. So that's part of a, another example of the mindset, the attitudinal change. We need to think all of us about things differently in a different way. It's, it's easy to get comfortable and complacent. I've also found Holly is another tip for people. I'm sure you would agree. Um, get out of your comfort zone because that'll kill you. That's what the Absolutely. cabal has tried to do is get us brainwashed and comfortable so that we're less prone to fighting back. We're less prone to changing the game where they control the cards. And so that's why I've always said to my audience, become your own central bank. It isn't just about money, but it's also about freedom, land, as I said, natural resources, private planes, um, growing your own food, weapons, if you like, you know, for protection and, you know, recreational, whatever the case may be. Um, it's not about having a gun to make a statement. It's it's more about um, 
protecting your rights constitutionally and maximizing the freedoms that our forefathers, not the privileges, but the freedoms, right? right. And, and and so so that's, those are just some examples of things that, that I would be broaching in addition to what you're saying. There is a whole, I mean, this could be a whole nother subject going into all of this because there is so much into this. It has been really a psychological war done on us um, that most people don't even recognize the brainwashing that's been done to us since we've been born. And it's really unlearning everything and relearning how to live a whole nother different way. And that's what this reset is all about. It's putting us back on the natural way that we God gave us to live and coexist on this planet. And everything that the cabal has done has been unnatural to us. It's even the frequencies of, you know, the, the music frequency is not harmonious to us. The frequency in our house for our electric, it disturbs our whole being. So everything they've done has been to disrupt us and really have power over us. And we're unlearning all of that and we're taking our power back. So there's yes, absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, cause I know your time is valuable and I want to respect that, but uh, two last questions or comments, if you will. Um, the first question being is, you know, obviously and I wouldn't ask you to never ask you for a date or any of that stuff, but with everything that, uh, cause we had this discussion with SG yesterday and, and it's been his contention that, um, the first and second quarter of this year are really pivotal to getting the financial aspects going because it, you know, it paves the way for everything else that's going to happen. Um, I'm just wondering if, firstly, you agree with him in that respect, and what are you seeing uh, sort of a broader range of the events that you articulated in the beginning of the show? What do you see in terms of, of timelines? Time frames, however you want to categorize it, in terms of these events playing out. Do you, do you see these things happening sooner in the year or later? So I I definitely agree with him. You can see there's been a culmination of all these events leading up where there's all these different pieces that are finally coming together. You know, they've all been disjointed and now they're all coming together to to put that global new structure together. Um, I see it sooner rather than later, just based on what I'm witnessing globally and what I'm hearing through my channels that I talk to. Um, you know, I will never call it because as I talk to my sources, they said we'd never believe that, you know, we'd still be here in 2024. It just is. It's one of those things that nobody can kind of pinpoint exactly what's going to make this happen other than looking at all these global events going on. Iraq is actually a key component in this because you can see them build their government up from the ground floor and all their pieces that they have to do to be a stable government and setting themselves free from the US control is happening. And being that they're kicking out the U.S. dollar as of January 1, that's a key thing. Now, Frank 26 last night said he believed that the U.S., um, that Iraq revalued in-country on January 1. They're doing a in-country, um, oh, what is the word? Um, oh, I can't think of the word right now. It's losing me. Floating, yeah, we, floating the currency. Oh. Yeah. Doing an in-country float and that by the 15th of this month, he believes they'll have a new rate out. We'll see. I, you know, listen to all this information. I don't hang my hat on everything. I, I pay attention to what's being said. I pay attention to what's being done. And we can just look at the other puzzle pieces coming in to, to you know, make this whole thing happen and kick it off. Yeah, I, I would just say to you, Holly, norm, I don't normally do this, but 
because of you know the dialogue that we've had now for a few times. Um, I disagree with that because I don't think it's gotten as worse. I mean, narrative wise, it's gotten as we haven't like Kim Clement said, when things seem at their worst, I'll free my people. We haven't gotten there yet. Um, you're seeing all the earthquakes. He also said, Kim Clement, the earth will shake and shake again. We're going to see more and more, I believe, earth events uh, continuing anomalies. When I was flying out of uh, Florida this Saturday, as an example, they had a tornado, which grounded a lot of the flights. That's pretty rare in that area you know, in terms of frequency of that. Um, and, and so you're seeing the earth react. I mean, you're seeing, you know, Japan and Indonesia and, you know, here in California, you're seeing all around the world, you're starting to see this ripple effect of, of earthquakes and, and uh, unnatural, uh, uncommon events. Uh, I just really believe fundamentally that, that, you know, Iran needs to step up and be the agitator that we've all known them to be and Israel making that grave mistake to get really bad before, you know, people have to get their eyes off of Iraq. It's just too much fixation on that. When, when people are diverted and they're looking more at the Middle East, <clears throat> I think it's going to be a, a surprise, like you said, why, why now moment that we won't see it coming. We'll think it's this, but it's actually this. It's going to be sort of a misdirect. Um, so right. that's just my only thought on that. Um, Really, I think you've covered so much ground so well. So I'll just kind of leave, you know, anything else that you'd like to say to our audience, closing thoughts, things that you really want to drive home to the audience that you feel they really need to to hear and understand. And I think, you know, the most driving point is, and I get this sent to me daily, everybody is so tired and so frustrated with how long this has gone on. And instead of focusing on, when this is going to happen or a specific date, focus on yourself, start working on yourself, because if you change who you are internally, then your world changes. You can better prepare yourself for handling this, you know, turn off these channels and start going in within, listen to something that's, uh, going to change your mindset that's positive, that's going to help you grow as a person. Read some book that's going to help you this year. You know, take on something that's going to shift you from focusing on this because this is something that will absolutely happen. It's never been a matter of if, it's always been a matter of when. But work on yourself. If you're frustrated with this and you're tired of what you hear Everybody out there, you know, complaining the gurus have the wrong dates, well, then don't listen to them. Work on yourself, work on being a better person this year. You know, start this year off as I'm going to reset myself. I'm going to do all the things that I put off for myself. I'm going to start today, now, and, and start doing it. And that really is the only thing we can work on. If you change yourself, you change your world. Well said. Yeah, I agree. Holly Celiano, always a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for joining the podcast. We'll look forward to seeing you again next month. And, uh, and thank you for gracing us with your time and information. And uh, God bless and have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much for having me on. Keep the faith, everybody. Take care.